Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems and in this video we will talk about the System Verilog bind construct. You'll find this in the language reference manual, we're shown here the latest version at the time of making this video. This is the IEEE standard 1800 2017 version. Where you'll find binding is in this section 23 here, modules and hierarchy. So it's a purely system Verilog construct, it's not exclusive to SVA assertions, although most of the time it's used for binding modules which contain verification code, for example assertions, cover statements, cover groups, assumptions for formal verification and any auxiliary code to an existing design. So generally they only contain verification code, although there's no actual requirement in the language reference manual for that to be so. You can see here the places you can specify the bind statement, which are inside of a module or an interface, or and this can exist as a single line in a file all by itself. That's called compilation unit scope. So you just compile that single line which contains a bind statement with the rest of your code and all the binding occurs. So let's go and look at the syntax now and the principle of how it works. Binding is a way in System Verilog of creating an instance of a module inside of another one without requiring access to the module to which you're binding. Typically this is used to bind a module containing verification code and particularly assertions, covers, assumes and associated Verilog auxiliary code which is helper code for the properties and attach it to the design module which we wish to verify. Here we have an example where we have a module called M1 prop. Notice it only has inputs. This only contains verification code, our assertions in this case. So it's not going to be driving RTL, therefore there will be no outputs ever in these kinds of assertion modules. And inside of those is our properties which are referring to the signals in the port list. Obviously if we refer to signals which weren't in the port list then we make this non-portable now. And the whole point of having these assertion modules, just like UVCs inside of a UVM test bench, is that we have a module we can instantiate and connect to whatever it is we wish to verify in a reusable way. This module M1 here, and notice the colour coding to make it easier on your eyes to associate one thing with the other. We have inputs and outputs on our design module. This is RTL code inside of here. And what we wish to do is take this module M1 prop and create an instance of it inside of M1 and then attach the relevant signals inside of the scope of the design module. And the bind keyword allows us to do this. So the way in which we use this syntax we say bind to and then we specify which design module do we wish to bind to. We then give the name of the module we wish to bind to it and MP1 is the name of the instance which will get created. So just to remind ourselves what we're doing, we're taking this assertion module and we're creating an instance of it inside of this design module and here is where we name that instance. Okay, that name doesn't exist anywhere else. And in the port list, if we're doing it like this, we're just doing associative kind of connections for the ports. We could put any kind of system Verilog port mapping here. But if we do it like this, then th those signal names are in scope of the design module we're binding to. So notice the green matches green up here. So given this bind statement, if we implement this, we're expecting rec in the design module to get associated with input A on the assertion module. AC with B and the signal named CLK with a signal named with exactly the same name CLK. Now with that bind statement there what we're doing is we're binding to all instances of module M1 however many there are anywhere in our design. We may not wish to do this however it might not be convenient or we wish to reduce the overhead on the simulator or whatever tool we're using or we're only interested in one particular channel in a host of channels. The way in which we can do that is with instance based assertion binding and here's one example but we'll get onto the syntax of that in a moment but for the time being let's just show ourselves what this looks like in the hierarchy. Here's the same code as before. We have a module top and there we have an instance of this M1 module named M and the number one and another instance named M and the number two. So there's two instances of the same design module here. And when I have this bind statement, it creates an instance named MP1 in both of them. So that's what my hierarchy will look like after that bind statement. If I had another module, M3, M4, M5 and 6 and so on, each one of those would have an instance named MP1 inside of it. But what if I didn't want an instance inside of M1 I only wanted an instance inside of M2, how could I do that? But before we show that, one important point about this is that bind statement here does not need to be in the same scope as these instances. Okay, it could literally be anywhere. So now we're seeing the principles and motivation and syntax for using the system Verilog bind statement. If we wish to do this on an instance basis, I'll point you towards another video which will show you how. If you go to Google and search for SVA binding, choose this video here, SVA instance based binding. What you'll also see is this channel here, Efficient System Verilog Assertions by Examples. So if you just searched in YouTube for SVA examples, this would come up. It's a playlist of 30 different videos on SVA. You can see them all listed here. And there might be some interesting topics for you in there. 
Alternatively, you can go on the Cadence website at support.cadence.com. So registration is simple. All you need is an email address from a company who is a Cadence customer. No more than that. And again, just search for SVA instance-based binding. And it'll be the top hit. And again, you get a series of SVA related videos in the tab player. So thanks for your time in listening to this and goodbye.